All right, guys, well, we're gonna be doing an e-bike review today on this Havasco bike. Now you guys know I've done a few reviews in the past and quite honestly, I had not intended to do any future reviews on e-bikes. So far, they've just not really proven to be that useful to me in the backcountry. But this one had rear suspension, so I really wanted to give that a try. So I went ahead and agreed to do the review. Havasco did send me this bike, but I am gonna give you guys my absolute honest take on the Havasco bike that I have here. First, let's start by going over a few specs. Now you can find a complete list of their specs on their website and you can find a link to their website below, but we are gonna go over a few that I think are the most key. First, you have a 1032 watt peak, 750 watt sustained 48 volt brushless rear hub motor. You have a removable internal lithium ion 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery. The bike has full suspension, front and rear, hydraulic disc brakes, a seven-speed Shimano derailleur. The frame is made with 6160 aluminum. You have 26 by four inch fat tires. The top speed on the bike is 28 miles per hour, but that is only once you unlock it in the phone app. The bike itself is 72.8 pounds and it will cost you $2,499. The bike did come very well packaged, though there was some damage in shipping and one of the axle bolts was protruding from the box. There is lots of padding and there is lots of tie wraps. You are going to need some good cutters to cut all the tie wraps. The bike does require some assembly. It does come with a basic toolkit and a manual to help you assemble the bike. After I assembled the bike, I just took it for a quick ride out in the parking lot of my shop. The power delivery on this bike is slightly different than other e-bikes that I have ridden. Most e-bikes that I have ridden, if you put it at a certain power level and you pedaled at all, even just a minute amount, it would go the speed of that power level. This bike is different in the fact that if you put it at a certain power level, if you pedal slow, it will still go slow. If you pedal faster, then it will get up to the level of speed that you have selected but it does require you to pedal faster. I did find that if you shifted up in gear, that that would speed up the rotation of the rear hub and the bike would detect that as you pedaling faster and it would go faster without you having to put as much effort in. But if you were in a low gear, you would have to pedal fast in order to get the hub to go fast enough for it to detect and push you forward at the level that you were going. All right, so we're just gonna really quickly go over the bike, quick walk around, give you guys a little bit of understanding of the layout of the bike. So on your left side, you have your front brake. They are hydraulic brakes using mineral oil. You have your controls for turning the bike on and off, setting your speed, and also uh, turning your headlight on and off. You also, on the left side, have a thumb throttle on the bike. In the center, you have your main display where you can see how fast you're going, your trip meter, how much battery you got left, and that type of information. Of course, you got your little headlight out front, and then on the right side, you have your rear brake, and then you have your shifter, up and down shifter for your derailleur. You got four inch tires on 26 inch wheels. You got front suspension that has got an adjustable knob here at the top. You have, in the center of the bike, you have your battery where pretty much all the e-bike batteries are located. Uh, you have your suspension for the rear suspension. You got your shock right here. And then you got your pedals and your sprocket, of course, in the normal place. We'll get to more of that in the pros. And then of course you got in the rear four inch tire and derailleur in the back. Now the seat that I have on here is not the seat that came with this bike and we'll get to that in the cons. But for the most part, that kind of gives you a layout of the bike. All right, so now let's jump right into the pros. And unfortunately, I'm gonna say this is gonna be a pretty short list for me on this bike. Now, the first pro is that it does have full suspension. That does make a difference when you're riding the bike. Having the back not be a hardtail just makes like cruising down roads and sitting on the seat a lot more comfortable. 
But when it comes to this bike, again, I've mentioned that this is not the stock seat. If you're using the stock seat, there's not really much that's gonna make that comfortable, but at least having the suspension is nice when you're going through rougher terrain. Now, the other pro that I have on this bike, if you guys have followed my other e-bike reviews, you know that I've had on every single e-bike, I have had problems with this front sprocket, um, either bending, breaking, teeth falling off, teeth bending, like everything that you could possibly have wrong, I've had gone wrong with the front sprocket on other e-bikes. That is one thing I do like about this one. Now, up to this point, I've had no issues with it, not to say that I won't, but if you do, it does look like they use a standard mountain bike sprocket that should be easily replaceable in the aftermarket. So if you do mess up the sprocket in some way, shape or form, you should be able to just go to the aftermarket and pick up a replacement. Another thing that I like about uh, their sprocket is the guard is actually metal. This is actual metal, it's not plastic. All the rest of the bikes that I've used, it was just a thin plastic that usually broke as soon as it hit something, but this is actually metal. Metal. That could be a problem if you hit something hard enough, could bend the metal into the sprocket and then you would have a problem. So uh, I'm not really sure about that, but it does seem like an upgrade in my mind at this point in time. All right, so let's jump into the cons of this bike. And this is actually going to be a little bit longer list. Now, the first thing that bothers me about this bike is it's a hub motor. In fact, I almost didn't want to accept it just because of that purpose. The ones I'd used in the past, I wasn't horribly impressed with. I definitely like the mid-motor bikes better. And the main reason for that is the hub motor can't take advantage of the bike's gearing. So imagine having your car and the motor is connected directly to the axle and it has no transmission between it. So that's exactly what you got going on here. You can't take advantage of those gears to help that motor build torque or get it up steep hills. In fact, yesterday when I was riding it, I came across a pretty steep hill and I couldn't get up it with this, even with the bike's assist. All right, well, I tried to climb that hill. I couldn't do it. It's a pretty steep hill. I don't know what the grade is, but I started my way up and you know, I'm not a conditioned mountain biker by any means, so that didn't help. But the motor being a hub motor just didn't have the poop to really help me up. In fact, for the most part, I'm sure I was helping me some, but I wasn't really noticing it. And then I got about where you saw me and it shifted gears or something. I bumped something and shifted gears and again, I think that has to do with the frame being just too small for me and me just not having enough room on the bike. So anyways, if you're a hunter and you're thinking about an e-bike uh, to get you back on some forest roads and stuff that are closed, that kind of stuff, you're gonna be carrying heavy gear and things like that. You may not wanna be looking at hub motor bikes. You wanna be looking at mid motor bikes. Now, the other thing I didn't like about this bike, and this was a, probably a bigger problem, and again, I think the mid having the hub motor probably added to this problem, but I only got a 14 mile range out of this bike on a full battery yesterday, riding it up here in the mountains. That's not very far, that's uh, only about an hour or hour and a half's worth of riding, and I don't know that it's really worth it to me to take this bike out to the woods if I can only do 14 hours of, or 14 miles on it. Uh, for me, living in my van, it's not a simple procedure of me just going home and plugging the battery back into my house outlet and recharging it. I am now going to have to rely on the charging system I have in my van to replenish this battery, which means I'm either going to have to sit out in the sun for a very long time, or I'm going to have to start and run my van, which is, means I'm using gas to basically power this bike. And so I kind of did some figuring. It would actually almost be uh, less efficient for me to ride this bike than to actually go drive the van 14 miles. So there's that. The other thing that I did not also like about this bike is the frame felt very small. I feel very crushed on the bike. And it says it's supposed to be good up to someone 6'2", but I had two other people ride the bike of varying heights, and they all agreed that the bike felt a little bit too small, and we were all felt like we were kind of falling over the handlebars. So, yeah, it just feels very squat and, and a little bit uncomfortable. 
And speaking of being uncomfortable, like I said, this is not the seat that actually came on it. This is from another mountain bike. This is kind of what I would call an old man's or grandpa's seat, but it's much more comfortable for being out and riding around and just cruising the back country. And with the added suspension, this seat's a lot nicer. This is the seat that came with the bike. It's a much more standard like mountain bike seat, like you would see on something more of a racing bike. And you know, I, I totally get it if you're into the racing bikes and all that, but for someone who just wants to go cruise the mountain roads, this is very uncomfortable. So I immediately ditched this seat as soon as I got it and uh, put this more comfortable grandpa seat on it. And then my final complaint about this bike is the positioning of the throttle. The throttle is a thumb uh, throttle, which is not my favorite in the first place. If you're familiar with riding quads, they have a thumb throttle, but I have a background in racing motocross back when I was younger, so I'm much more used to a twist throttle and much prefer that over the thumb throttle. But what makes this thumb throttle worse in my mind is it's on the wrong side of the handlebars. If you are a quad rider, you're gonna expect the thumb throttle to be on the right side of the handlebars and it's actually on the left side so to me that's just weird and it's not intuitive and I found myself a lot of times accidentally shifting gears with the bike when I was riding it because my mind wanted to use this shifter as the throttle which it's in the position of where I would expect a thumb throttle on a quad to be. All right, so here's my final thoughts on this e-bike. Now, if you're looking for something just to cruise around the local parks or you're going back and forth to work uh, in the city or in a small town, I definitely can see the value of an e-bike, you know, where you have access to constant power, you can charge it at home, you can charge it at work, and it gets you back and forth and you're gonna save on gas. And I, like I said, that, that definitely seems very like a very good plan at that point. But for the cost of one of these e-bikes, I think that you'd be better off investing that money in a small four-stroke motorcycle if your goal is to be able to come up to the mountains like I am here and be able to go explore mountain roads. You're gonna get a lot more distance out of that motorcycle than you're ever gonna get out of this e-bike. An average 250 four-stroke uh, four motorcycle, you're probably gonna see anywhere from 60 to 80 miles per gallon. And so on a couple gallon tank, you're gonna be able to travel a long ways. And like I said, for me right now to recharge this bike, it would probably take two or three gallons of my van to be able to get it recharged, running the van to generate enough power to recharge this. So that same two to three gallons could get me you know, 150 miles plus of exploring on a four-stroke motorcycle. The fact that these bikes, e-bikes, are also on the heavy side. Now, this one's not bad. It is definitely on the lighter side of other e-bikes I have tried. This one's around 72 pounds, but it physically feels lighter than the last few bikes that I've tried, and definitely far lighter than the ad motor that I that I tried. So, but they're still a heavy bike and you need a pretty significant carrier to be able to safely carry these, especially if you're gonna be off-roading your vehicle and it's gonna be bouncing around a lot. So the amount of effort you're gonna be putting into building a strong enough carrier for one of these e-bikes, again, I think put a little extra effort in and just carry a small uh, four-stroke motorcycle and I think you'll find that you'll have a lot more fun on it and a lot of the four strokes that I saw online, you can actually even write, legally ride on road uh, and license it. So anyways, it might be just something to think about if, if, depending on what your goal with the bike is. Again, if you're gonna just be ripping it around in the city and you got a lot of access to plugging it in and charging it up, then I definitely see this as a, a good option. If you're coming up to the mountains and you wanna do some serious exploring, 14 miles ain't gonna get you very far. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got on this bike. I hope you found something useful in this uh, review. If you did, please do give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, leave those down below. If you'd be interested in seeing me review a f small four-stroke motorcycle, I like the one I'm showing here on Amazon, let me know down in the comments and I'll see if possibly I can make that happen. Anyhow, guys, we're gonna get back out to enjoying some outdoors. So we'll see you guys again outside.